I heard Ben Shapiro and I heard Ron DeSantis and they said, they said Israel is the only military force in the world that warns civilians before bombing them. I mean, how cute. That is so nice of them so, because with this logic, if Russian troops started warning Ukrainians before bombing their houses, we're cool with Putin, right? I mean, okay, Habibi, you have uh, warned them, go invade, it's fine. You have done your job. And I understand all, and I also heard Ben Shapiro talking about... <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's just cooking them, dude. Let's watch Bassam Youssef. Well, joining me now to discuss the conflict in Israel and Gaza is a TV host and satirist, Bassam Youssef. Uh, Bassam, it's uh, great to have you back on the program. I wish it was under different circumstances. Um, first of all, what is your reaction to what happened on October the 7th? Oh, it was terrible, of course. I mean, we kind of get our news kind of also secondhand because, you know, my, my wife's family, they live in Gaza. They actually have uh, cousins and uncles there, um, and uh, their house also was bombed. We haven't been able to communicate with them for the past three days. Communication are lost. So uh, we don't know actually what is the, uh, how, is the, how are they doing, but you know, we're used to that. I mean, it's, it's just like, it's, it's, it's very repetitive. We're used to that. We're used to them being bombed every time and moving from one place to the other. Uh, you know, it's just like those Palestinians, they're very dramatic. Ah, Israel killing us. Uh, but they never die. I mean, they always come back. You know, they're, they're very difficult to kill, very difficult people to kill. I, I know because I'm married to one. Mm. I tried many times, couldn't kill her. <laughs> I mean, there's a dark humor there, and I understand why. Because oh, it's not dark humor. I really, I try to get to her every time, but she uses our kids as human shields. I can never take her out. <laughs> Again, I understand the, the humor, but I, to be serious, uh, Bassem, about this, Tonight, there okay, is... I will be serious. Now, I, I, I will be serious. I was watching your interview with Ben Shapiro, and I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. I think that Ben Shapiro is one of the smartest people who ever walked this earth. He's very, very smart. I follow him, and I believe everything he said. And when he came out on your show, his solution was, and I quote, his solution was that the solution for this is for Israel to annex Gaza and to kill as many son of bitches as possible to make sure that this will never happen again. And anyone... Anyone who call for a ceasefire will be a terrorist sympathizer. So God forbid, I don't want to be labeled as a terrorist sympathizer. So I agree with Ben Shapiro. I think we should kill as many son of bitches as possible. Well, let me, so okay. far, but Basa, three, let me, three, so far, 3,500 people were killed, mm. including 5,000 son of bitches in the bombing of the Baptist uh, 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 hospital as we speak right now. Mm. One third of those 3,500 were children. So my question to Ben Shapiro is, how many more son of bitches do we need to kill so Ben Shapiro is happy? Okay, because it changes from one year. It changes from one. I'm I'm sorry. That I, please, 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 I'm 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 really at a disadvantage here. I'm looking at a camera. I don't see you. I can hear you on my. And the ears. reason I'm interrupting so is I think you might be. I think I think you're conflating different interviews with Ben Shapiro. He didn't use the phrase "sons of bitches" with me. Let me play to you what he actually said he on my. He show. did. He did. Go what? back. Go back to your interview. No, he, he, he didn't. Did. That was another interview. But let me play what he said to me here. Well, I, frankly, I don't believe in proportionate response to terrorism. I believe that the way that you guys, uh, Bassam Yusuf is a a very he is the the uh, John Stewart of Egypt, okay? He is a comedian and he also does like political commentary. Of course he's being sarcastic. He's trying to expose how fucking insane it is. How fucking insane it is that Ben can say things like this. No, he's he is yeah, he's a he's a lib. I can't believe you guys are taking what he's saying seriously. The point he's trying to make is it's ridiculous that Ben is saying these uh, psychotic terrorist things. Stop terrorism is with wildly disproportionate response. That doesn't mean in terms of targeting civilians. It means pee. in terms of killing as many terrorists as humanly possible and allowing them to dictate the terms of engagement by hiding behind civilians in areas that, that they are supposedly responsible for means that the only option for Israel is to surrender to Hamas's hatred of its own citizens, its willingness to use its own children as human shields. No, no country worth its salt could ever do that. Now, that is significant, substantively different to what you said he said, right? He's talking there but, but specifically I agree, I, but, but about I Hamas agree terrorists. With him. I, agree, I, I, I agree with him. 
the, the thing is, the question is, what is a proportionate response? Because yes. it has been different from one tier to another. So if you look to this graph, for example, this is the death of Israeli and Palestinians, and it's changing from one year to year. It's like fluctuating like crypto. So my question is today, what is the going rate today for human lives? I mean, 2014 was a great year for Ben Shapiro. 88 Israelis were died, and there was 2,329 Palestinians killed on the other side. That is one Israeli for 27 uh, Palestinians. That is a very good exchange rate. What I'm saying is, what is the exchange rate well, for I, today? Well, I, so I, you guys will be happy. That's my question. Well, it's not me, I, I it's not me guys. I, I don't, I'm not on either no, side No, no, here. not you. Like, when I yeah. say you guys, I say like the people on the other side of that. I know that you, you don't think like that. You are one of the good guys. But let's... <laughs> Uh, he's just fucking cooking them, dude. Like, you're one of the good guys, I promise. Let me tell you something. I mean, I'm, the reason that I'm, I'm using this is that, I mean, I, could, I can't remember what happened in 2014, and there was no music festival, but there, were, there must be something. I mean, they must do something. It is their fault. It has to be something. I mean, 2018, 300 Palestinians died. Ah, who's counting, you know? Uh, but the, the, so the thing is, what my question is... Yeah, 2018 was the march to return. Uh, peaceful protest. Let's find what is the exchange rate for human life today so we know, expect the future death of Palestinians and we'll be happy to it. My, my response to that would be this, Bassem. I thought carefully about this uh, because I think it's very tricky. Holy shit, this guy actually did the grandma to baby exchange rate. Yeah, he did. I, 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 I said this yesterday when we were watching the... Uh, Mohammed Hijab video and I was like, you should just ask, like, what's the exchange rate? How many... How many grandmothers being kidnapped is the equivalent to, like, multiple Palestinian children being uh, fucking burned to death with uh, rockets? It's tricky, but I'm sure you have, like, a decent balance for it. And he's doing it right now, which is good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that someone is doing that. For people like me to immerse ourselves into a conflict. Before people say he's watching you, uh, this man has been a fucking uh, satirist and, a, and the John Stewart in Egypt for... Uh, longer than I've been alive. So, uh, not longer than I've been alive, but he's definitely been around for much longer than I have. So, no, I don't think that... I don't think that he's watching me. And I thought carefully about I what I feel pee. about this. I feel that the scale of what Hamas did on October the 7th supersedes anything else I've seen in this conflict, really, ever. The, the, the savagery, yes. the butchery, the slaughter of 1,300 Absolute. people, the uh, shooting of babies, the 100%. kidnapping of grandmas, and so on. So if, if we can agree on that, which I think is inarguable, then the question then becomes, again, about proportion. I, I don't disagree that there's been a lot of bad stuff on both sides going back historically for decades. But if we agree that this was on a different level altogether, quite deliberately by Hamas... Designed, I, designed you know to provoke. I, I'm gonna, designed I'm, to provoke. No, here's my I'm question. Be a, Let me ask you a question. Uh -huh. and, and the question, because the you, question? you raised it earlier about proportion. I honestly don't know what the proportionate response is. Uh, I, yes. I, I honestly don't. I, I don't. I've been watching the airstrikes so this week thinking. So what, what's your question? Well, I was asked. I, well, I would ask you if you were Israel, what would uh, you. If I was Israel. If you were Israel and that had happened to you, what would you uh -huh. think would be the appropriate way for the country to respond? I would do exactly like Israel did, kill as many people as possible since the, the, the world is letting me do it. I mean, I, I can do it because I can, you know. But the thing is, like, you know what, I agree with you. And you know what, I'm going to be even ahead of you because I see the question coming. Do you condemn Hamas for the atrocities? Yes, I condemn Hamas. Mm. I condemn Hamas. I condemn Hamas. Hamas is the source of all evil. There are reasons for everything. And you know what, let's for a minute... Imagine a world without Hamas. Right. What will this world look like? Mm. Let's give this world a name, and let's name this world the West Bank. Hamas has absolutely no control in the West Bank. And this is the beginning of this year. Only through August, 37 Palestinian kids were killed. Mm. No music festival. Why did you say he's a sub? Why did you... I mean, the world without... The world without West Bank is like directly the same commentary that I've uh, I I've said as well. Go back 30 seconds. Oh, he's going to condemn. I honestly don't know what the proportionate response is. Uh, I, yes. I, I honestly don't. I, I don't. I've been watching the airstrikes so this week thinking... So what, what's your question? Well, I was asked, I would, well, I would ask you, if you were Israel, what would uh, you... If I was Israel. If you were Israel and that had happened to you, what would you uh -huh. think would be the appropriate way for the country to respond? 
I would do exactly like Israel did, kill as many people as possible since the, the, the world is letting me do it. I mean, I, I can do it because I can, you know. But the thing is, like, you know what, I agree with you. And you know what, I'm going to be even ahead of you because I see the question coming. Do you condemn Hamas for the atrocities? Yes, I condemn Hamas. Mm. I condemn Hamas. I condemn Hamas. Hamas is the source of all evil. They are the reason for everything. And you know what, let's for a minute imagine a world without Hamas. Right. What will this word look like? Mm. Let's give this word a name and let's name this word the West Bank. Hamas has absolutely no control in the West Bank. And this is the beginning of this street. Only through August, 37 Palestinian kids were killed. Mm. No music festival, no paragliding, no Hamas. Mm. Since the occupation of the West Bank, 7,000 Palestinians were killed. No music festival, no paragliding, no Hamas. Mm. I can go on and on and on and on. No, no, but you're not saying this because, because in a way, in a way you're him. preaching to the I love choir. I've followed this, this crisis. Oh, no, so. you're not preaching. Sure. So the, the, the thing is, like, I, well, because in the sense I heard that I know, you saying, I know that what you're saying has validity, of course. Of course uh, I Pierce, do. Pierce, by the way, Pierce, 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 I am at a disadvantage here. I can hear you. I cannot see you. Mm. I am in a claustrophobic room. And so please cut, cut me some slack and don't interrupt me and interrupt my points. Sure. So, uh, because this, this, this has to be fair. Understand. Uh, because if you want to only hear your opinion, I can just condemn Hamas and go home. Mm. I can do that. So, if you, do you want to do that or do you have a much more nuanced conversation? No, I absolutely want to have a nuanced conversation. I wasn't aware I was interrupting you. I thought I was letting you speak. Amazing. So, yeah. let's, I mean, I, mean I, would say, I would say I really applaud Israel for doing one thing that no military force in the world does. Because I heard, I heard Ben Shapiro and I heard Ron DeSantis and they said, they said Israel is the only military force in the world that warns civilians before bombing them. I mean, how fucking cute. That is so nice of them. So, because with this logic, if Russian troops started warning Ukrainians before bombing their houses, we're cool with Putin, right? I mean, okay, Habibi, you have uh, warned them, go invade, it's fine. You have done your job. I mean, the thing is, and I understand all, and I also heard Ben Shapiro talking about uh, about human shield. So you remember my wife's family, they live in Gaza. So I asked them, I told them, when Israel give you the nice warning, the cute warning, does Hamas force you to stay in your home so you can be bombed and use a, a, as, as human shield? You know, what, uh, Hassan here, uh, my, my, wife's, uh, my wife's cousin, he's a, he's, a, he's a loser, you know. He, he told me, you know, when I asked him, does that happen? He told me, no. The lying son of a bitch lied to me. I told him, you don't understand. Ben Shapiro and Ron DeSantis keep saying that Israel warns you and Hamas asks you to, keep, to stay put. So I, 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 I told you, he's a loser. He never kept a job. He even like failed in all of the interviews to become like a human shield. I, I, I would believe right. Ben Shapiro. Let but me let's, ask you this, let, So let's go with that. No, no, no. Let's, no, no. Let me ask but you At some this. point, I must be able to if ask we, you questions. If we, it's not if a monologue agree, for if you, agree, but If we agree, if we agree that for the 14,000 casualties, I mean, who's counting? Our human shield, does that mean that every single one of those civilians was standing, obscuring a military target behind them? Because that's a lot of weapons. I mean, Hamas is packing. No, of course it doesn't. <laughs> look, I, you know, it I doesn't, so, so, so there is some collateral damage. Lots of collateral damage. Yes. It's fine. Yeah. You kill, you kill some to save some and then kill some more. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I agree. I would, I let agree. me ask you this. Again, it comes back to proportionate response. When the, world, yes. when the world decided it had to get rid of ISIS because of the appalling butchery they were carrying out, uh, yes. it did so by, by also killing, it very sadly, a lot of civilians along the way by doing airstrikes yes. against... Places which but killing civilians ISIS are inevitable. So you my, said that in the beginning. My point is, once, it's, in, it's inevitable. Yeah, but once inevitable. Israel, we, once we, we, Israel we. has decided that they want to get rid of Hamas, mm -hmm. and Hamas is embedded with civilian yes. population, I'm very concerned about yes. what's going to happen next. I've written a column tonight saying, yeah, I remember the Iraq and, and war, the which is, I opposed, I, right? I, I, I remember all this. So my I, question for you is, I know. I, what would, be, what would yeah, you think would be an appropriate response by Israel to what happened? Well, well, the, these are years of disproportionate responses of Israel. Right. Did it solve the solution? Did it solve the problem? Did it, did it work before so it will work? What, what will be the surprise this time? What will be the twist that will make this work this time? What? What will be different this time? Seriously, I mean, like, this is only the last 15 years. I mean, because it's too, too many papers. I just got this. But what, how, how will this will be different? And the thing is, it, I am so glad in the introduction my goat dude he's right then you mentioned the iraq war i applaud you pierce for saying that because you were honest about it you said that spreading An update earlier i looked <clears throat> i looked at our um
I looked at like my Instagram. I don't think we had a falling out, but I think he just unfollowed me a while back or maybe never followed me at all. But I thought we had communicated prior, uh, prior, prior to this. And then I realized, no, we've only texted each other. So um, I don't know why I thought that we were, you know, maybe it was his fan account. No, no, no. I've met Bassam. I've met Bassam. He's given me his book. Um, I, I met him at VidCon, I think, like a couple years ago. Or no, Politicon, I met him. There's a photo out there somewhere of us hanging out from uh, Politicon. Bassam, not Bassam, sorry. Not VidCon, Politicon. But I don't remember. Pick. Oh, there it is. Yeah, he's the man. Lies like WMDs, make people look at those people as less of humans and they would accept the death of a million Iraqi, whether by no, sanctions or by invasion, right? You are, you, you are a good man. This is amazing. And you know what is similar? Is when you spread the lies of 40 decapitated babies, although it was refuted. So what happens when people hear that, you know, killing babies is horrible. But when you say decapitated 40 babies, you are planting a certain image well, who has a said certain that? trigger in people's mind. Who has said huh? that? Who has said 40? Who has said that? You who have said, said 40 decapitated. Who has said you that? Have, you have repeat. No, no, I haven't. What? I've never said that. You haven't said on your show 40 decapitated no. babies? Never. Ben Shapiro didn't say it? No. Ron DeSantis didn't say Nobody it? Nobody has said okay, it. Okay, uh, Peter. No, they Nobody haven't. said it? No. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe I am wrong. Decapitated. Yeah, you're wrong. I've never said the that. Thing, what happened? What? Ha yeah. What, what, no, you're you're wrong. But that's awesome. Yeah, nobody ever said it, guys. It was all, it, dude. It was all a dream. We dreamt it up. It was just a. It was just cooked up by uh, <laughs> I24 and immediately repeated without any verification whatsoever. And then Joe Brandon said it too. Didn't he bring it up to fucking Muhammad Hijab like literally yesterday? Yeah, it's got to be like a weird collective hallucination, you know, like a Mandela effect type situation, I think. I'm sure someone in here can find it. I'm not going to go uh, sifting through it right now, but I feel like he brought it up, I'm pretty sure. But the thing is, when Iraq, but the thing is, the same thing is happening in Iraq. Ben Shapiro once tweeted, not even about Gaza, about the West Bank, when Israel continued to build the illegal settlement. Mm -hmm. He said, 2017, Israel likes to build... I'm sure he'll say he never said 40 babies. He never said said beheaded. Piers is being an ass. There's a debate raging about whether Hamas beheaded babies or stabbed shot them in their bedrooms as if some of these evil depraved acts of terrorism is less wicked than the other. Oh, okay. He has said this. Pretty sure he has. Um, This is fair. This is a fair take, in my opinion. But I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did actually uh, run the... I'm pretty sure he actually did run the, the whole like beheaded babies uh, line against what is this on his show a palestinian and isis were taken out by the way with you're, you're plane, with planes me. no no here's my you don't do this with the ambassador i'm gonna finish you're doing this with ben shapiro which you gave the show to him no no hang on i'm giving you, you plenty of time no, you're not. I'm giving you, plenty. you asked about the analogy of a plane flying over yeah, yeah. targeting but you didn't answer my question but that did happen muhammad with isis would you accept to belfast of... to be flattened no, wait a minute or not yes no, wait or no. a minute it never happens. So the like for like isn't. It's not. Relevant. It's a hypothesis. It's, no, hypothetical. it's not. It's not. I don't do hypotheticals. Let's oh, you with, don't do hypotheticals. No, no. Let's deal with reality. Okay, yeah? let's deal with reality. Now, let me let me finish. Then you can ask. You don't ask a question. No. Here's the reality. The British public can see this. Here's the reality. Yeah. Right. Let's just. British public can see this. Yeah, they can see it. Yeah, go on. They listen keep, to the debate. Keep, keep going. Right. I, for what it's worth, I think it's a good debate to have. Right. These are questions many people on the pro-Palestinian side are having. I get it. I get it. Right. But you're trying to compare. What happened on October the 7th with the IRA? No, I'm not. I'm I use the hypothe I'm hypothetical Wait a minute, question. I'm comparing it to ISIS. And oh, the way that the world ISIS. in the end dealt with ISIS actually was to use airstrikes. Okay. And many civilians were killed. There's a huge difference many between innocent the people two, died. You're not, you're They're not. not. He doesn't say this in the clip at all. What the fuck's going on? Five days ago, terrorists from Hamas attacked Israel. They murdered and raped civilians. They executed the elderly at bus stops. They took babies and Holocaust survivors as hostages and they massacred young people at a festival. They may, it emerged last night, have even beheaded babies in one... Okay, there you go. Um, he'll say, I, they, I said they may have. ...built things, and Arabs, not Palestine, not Hamas, mm. Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Yeah, I thought that Yo, was very... He didn't, say, he didn't say 40 decapitated babies. 
There's many different uh, avenues of exit here. You can just do plausible deniability. The Israeli defense minister, he said, those are human animals. Mm. And the thing is, Ben Shapiro should know better because, you know, long before the Holocaust, before Jewish people were thrown in the gas chambers, the Nazi propaganda called them rats. Mm. Now, as a human being, I will never accept that another human being being thrown in a, into a gas chamber, but uh, a rat, kill a t ten. Kill a thousand, three thousand five hundred. They are son of a bitch. They are human animals who live in open sewage and decapitate babies. And mm -hmm. because of that propaganda, Mr. Morgan, mm -hmm. that guy in Illinois, the 71 years old guy, he killed, stabbing the six years old Palestinian kid in Illinois 26 times. And he used to play with him. They used to be friends. Yeah, but he that part is so fucked up. I didn't cover this yesterday. The six year old literally did not understand what was going on and ran up to him to hug him. And then the fucking landlord psychopathic freak stabbed him 26 times and killed him. Now, let me tell you something. It's so fucking tragic. This is something that I, I said during the day of jihad, supposedly, right? When people were like, oh, dude, day of jihad, there's going to be global jihad. Something that I told my normie Jewish friends at the time. Uh, who were afraid in the Western world, but specifically in the United States of America, especially. If you are Jewish, your greatest threat of anti-Semitism is not going to come from Muslims. It is going to come from white supremacists. Okay? Your greatest threat of Islamophobia and an Islamophobic hate crime is not going to come from Jews. It's going to come from white supremacists. That is a statistical probability. That is the like, I'm telling you what the likelihood is. I'm telling you what the numbers look like. It is fucking so frustrating that there is this endless back and forth when we all know, we all fucking know that the real purveyors of said violence, a statistical certainty, sorry. We all know the purveyors of said violence is overwhelmingly White supremacists, okay? Overwhelmingly, when the worst, when the worst anti-Semitic act, anti-Semitic hate crime happened on U.S. soil in that synagogue in Pennsylvania, it was not a Muslim man that walked in there with a weapon and killed a bunch of Jews that were praying. It was a Trump supporter who had become so radical that he thought Trump wasn't aggressive enough, okay? Same thing in Christchurch, New Zealand. The person who walked into those mosques and slaughtered all of those Muslim, uh, all of those, those uh, Muslims that were praying, that person was not a Jew. That person was, yet again, a white supremacist. The idea that we face incredible threats as Muslims or, or Jews from one another is not found in any real evidence. There is no evidence for this. And yet, that is the media narrative. Ben Shapiro has been responsible for Islamophobic hate crimes, right? Like the Quebec, uh, the, the, the terrorist in Quebec. But that was not because he's Jewish. That was because he was a white supremacist, okay? His white supremacist commentary had radicalized people. Ben Shapiro does not represent Orthodox Jews in any meaningful capacity. How do I know this? After all, he is a staunch opponent of abortion in the United States of America. This is not a Jewish value. As a matter of fact, it is literally permissible, not only allowed, but encouraged in under certain circumstances in the Torah. What a ridiculous thing. Just because he wears a yarmulke does not change the reality that what he is preaching aligns with judaism it does not different rocket oh boy here we are uh more more uh more videos coming out of idf raw footage a rocket aimed at israel misfired and exploded at 1859 the same moment a hospital was hit in gaza yeah that's what it is it's uh it uh it, it was actually just a rocket that exploded in the air that was able to fucking uh drop a massive bomb on a hospital anyway oh boy none of this is addressed the main question I have. Anyway, let's continue with uh, Bassem. Marching into their apartment, stabbing his mother and killing him, shouting 
all Muslims could die. Yeah. It took you 80 years to change one word from Jewish to Muslim. Mm. And then you transferred your guilt to us and took away our land. Let me ask you a question. That, that deal sucks, man. Let me ask you a yeah. question. Uh, ask, how ask do Yami. we get from where we are now to peace? Well, first of all, you need to change the perception. Uh, Nikki Haley, the American presidential candidate, said, we are in Israel in this because it's a fight between evil, uh, good and evil. Now, if you already decided someone is good, he can do no evil. And if you decided someone is evil, it's good to kill them. Killing them is good. You see, and, and the thing is, it is, it is not like something new. I mean, I, I, I look at history and I see, I'm sorry to say, and I'm sorry to say that, but Westerners has, has always dealt like this with indigenous people. You first treated them like savages, you know, Native American, First Nation, Aboriginal. They're savages. Kill all the savages. And then when they're almost extinct, you start feeling sorry for them, you know, like animals. So maybe, maybe the solution is that we kill as many Palestinians as possible so that few of them that remains do not bother you. And you maybe keep, you keep talking about as He's so right. Dude, if you drop the land back meme in here, a land acknowledgement meme in here, it's like, Felix has made that joke as well. It's, it's great. He's right. Yeah, For another Hussain, 100 years, he will become a tree hugger. Let me just challenge you on this. And he will campaign All right, for, listen, for, for, for you, preserving you keep, the free You keep talking that, about yeah, Westerners go. like me. Okay, so let me return the favor, okay? Hamas yeah. is dedicated to the complete eradication of Jewish people. I am they, not the spokesman for Hamas. I'm not saying you are. Why do you, why do you get, I'm not saying I'm you not are. I'm not the spokesman. You're talking I to me. I fucking hate them. Basem, Fuck Hamas. You are, you are, you are, Hamas. No, no. are you happy? Kusoma Hamas. Are you happy? Kusoma Hamas. You're talking <laughs> in a generalized okay. way about people in the West who always talk about Arabs yeah. as savages. I don't. No, no, no. I'm talking I about America. I actually Western led the media. campaign. I'm talking about West. I led the I'm, media campaign listen, in this when, country against the Iraq war. Okay, so I don't you see... Are, you, you, I don't you see people the in the Middle ones, East as savages. You but what are I would one say of the good ones. But what I, I would say is... I am not talking about you. You're great. No, no, it's not about me You're being amazing. great. It's we about, love you. It's we'll about, love you. It's about the way Hamas behaved on October the 7th was like savages, like a pack of savages. It was the worst atrocity against Jewish people yes. since the Holocaust. There has to be... Of course. There has to be a response. They, so my they question should be for you eradicated. Is, my question for you is, notwithstanding the history, Basim, what is the proportionate response? But I don't know, but there's no Hamas in the West Bank and they're still dying there. So what's your excuse? I don't have any excuse. The, okay, what's, what's your explanation? Sorry. I mean, I have an answer for this. 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 Okay. And it's very simple. One, there is a military action that you could take that Israel does not want to take because it doesn't have enough confidence in its own troops. Okay. You could do a fucking targeted strike on areas where you know there are Hamas tunnels. You claim you know every single thing that's going on in Gaza. You could easily do this. You don't want to do this because you are afraid. You're afraid that the IDF is going to die if they go in there, okay? So it's much easier for you to just keep lobbing missiles from hundreds of, of feet above the ground over, uh, over the, the, on top of the clouds, basically, from afar, by hitting a fucking button over and over again instead of actually going down there. Those missiles kill humans. Those missiles kill civilians. Those missiles kill babies. And you don't care because it is completely irrelevant to the equation because you do not see the Palestinians as human beings. You see them as filth. Not even an animal. You would not mistreat, you would not mistreat an animal like this. You see them as a pest. Okay? So that's one. Number two, there is an even better way to solve the conflict, okay? That is through uh, a, a, a ceasefire, a peace negotiation, a bilateral peace negotiation that features the actual Palestinian unified authorities, okay? With a, uh, after ending the occupation and ending the apartheid regime, allowing every single person to have uh, equal rights, and offering reparations to the Palestinians that were harmed, okay? Having an international criminal court take a look at every single person that was responsible for civilian deaths. This means that, this means that a lot of leadership on the Palestinian side would serve a prison sentence. 
This means that a lot of uh, the, the IDF leadership and politicians would serve a prison sentence. Okay? That is the peaceful way to resolve this conflict. And even if you have, even if you're like, no, fuck that. I never want that. Whatever. Okay? Then there is a military way to solve this issue as well that does not mean bombing fucking hospitals. That does not mean, and by the way, if you turn in and say, uh, the IDF didn't bomb this last hospital, Hassan, even though I do not believe you, okay, even though I do believe that the IDF bombed that hospital, the IDF bombed that hospital on Saturday! So shut the fuck up! But remember that! The exact same hospital was targeted by the IDF. Continue I don't make any use, pretense so. that this hasn't been a massive problem okay, what, 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 okay. between Palestine I, 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 and Israel I, I, yeah. going back to the mid 40s. We all know this, right? I, I, I'm, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Pierce, 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 listen. I'm not saying that you're making excuses, but if you are adopting a certain point of view, mm. you have to at least defend it. I'm telling Yeah, oh, by the way, I covered this as well. The church that ran the hospital said it was a, it, it was a uh, Israeli airstrike as well. Not that it fucking matters for these demons. Like, let's be real. Um, wait, what the fuck? Why is it not uh, uploading? Okay, well, I can't even get access to this fucking tweet anymore. It doesn't matter. The victims are also Hamas. They're Hamas. Everyone is Hamas. They're lying in collaboration with Hamas to hide all of their weapons that they had, the nukes that they had in there. It's Hamas. It's always and forever Hamas. And also, even if it's not Hamas, it could have been Hamas, in which case it's still justified. You got botted and raided on Twitter? Wait, what do you mean? What does that even mean? I got botted and raided on Twitter. Twitter is full of bots. Anyway, let's Telling continue. you there is no Hamas in the West Bank. What is, what is the excuse? Mm. Not your excuse. What is the excuse to kill those people? Mm. Well, it's, listen, this question of proportionality is one that... No, it, no, no, answer my question! I've been answering your question, you answer mine! It's actually not my job to answer your questions. He says this all the time, whenever he has a thing that he can't answer. It's not. Okay, not your, not your job. I, I, I agree with I'm you. I'm more it interested in you, job. who has I'll, family I'll, I'll, in Gaza, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll, who's an Egyptian I'll tell you, I'll tell you in, in the Middle I'll tell you East, something. right? I'm more interested in what you, you know have that, to say. That, that, okay, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I think Hamas is the problem, okay? Right. Now, let's then say agree. Hamas is removed. Let's Hamas, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm agreeing with everything. Hamas. I, you want me to condemn Hamas? I will condemn Hamas, Hummus, Hassan, uh, mm. everyone. Guys, say so wait. I can't hear you. The uh, the earpiece. Damn. Okay. Oops. There's Hamas in the earpiece, bro. The IFB is coming off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I Sorry. do need. I help. think. I think. Okay. Just go, go ah. back. Is he there? You go back. You go. Can you, you hear go me? Back. Okay. Go. Thank you, guys. Can you hear Bas? Yeah. Yeah. Now I can hear. Okay. So the, here's the thing. Can you hear? Okay. Yeah. So Isaac, let's say for example Hamas ceased mm. to exist. Okay. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Hamas ceased to exist today. Now. Right now, in Palestine, mm. in West Bank and, and, uh, and Gaza, 20% of Palestinians go through Israeli prison system, whether mm. imprisonment, whether uh, 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 interrogation, whether torture. And the rest of them, they live a life of daily loss of land, of homes, of life, mm. and they are, they are suffocated by this. So let me ask you something. If you are a Palestinian living into these conditions for decades, mm. would you... Would you sympathize with your oppressor or sympathize with the people who claim they resist them even if they are terrorists? I have made, I have made no secret that I think the conditions Palestinians have had to exist under are completely unacceptable. Yeah. I've said that for years. Yeah, so but the do you think they're responsible? Becomes... But do you think they're responsible for the radicalization of an entire people? Also, it is actually pretty funny because, yeah, literally, wait, I'm, I'm a big fan of this Bassam guy. He's hot. <laughs> Yeah, he's a, he's super hot. So, uh, Piers literally dodges questions. He cannot fucking ever answer if he condemns the Israeli uh, disproportionate retaliation and the violence. He does not. He he openly says he thinks it's it's fine, or at the very least refuses to elaborate on it and always dodges it. How do you forge peace between two warring parts of that region, who for decades? have approached peace, in my view, with mutual sledgehammers, with no actual desire to have peace. And I think it comes down in the end to great leadership. Well, and well, I, I don't think there's yeah, great yeah, leadership. Yeah, but, but, I don't think, well, hang on, let me make my point. I don't think there's great leadership on either side. Where is the Nelson Mandela figure here to come through all this? Sniped by an idea of sniper and killed. Nelson Mandela also um, literally refused to condemn violence. So I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Nelson Mandela was in prison. I've told you guys this before. Nelson Mandela has been so fucking whitewashed. 
But the ANC tried peaceful protests for years. There was a massive, there was a massive police presence at all the protests. It did nothing to end the apartheid. They thought that they could get mass arrested. Their first action was to peacefully violate the laws and get mass arrested, right? They would, they would, uh, vi- they would nonviolently engage in civil disobedience. They thought, maybe we can overrun the prison system by crowding it. Little did they know, that didn't work. The prison system did not explode due to the, uh, all of the black people that were uh, resisting uh, apartheid with civil disobedience. Now, after that, they still continuously kept trying to do peaceful protests. Okay? They tried to keep doing peaceful protests. Until at one protest, the police opened fire and killed 69 ANC protesters at the time. Nelson Mandela had a uh, moment of radicalization right then and there. In the aftermath of that, he realized that, yes, there had to have been. uh, He realized that uh, the, the actual supporters of the ANC on the ground, the youth, wanted to retaliate through violent means. They no longer wanted to retaliate through peaceful means because the world was not listening to them. The world was not seeing them, okay? One thing that he has said on this matter in particular was, we've exhausted all other means. I'm paraphrasing. We've exhausted all other means, and now uh, this is the only other option we have, okay? Afterwards, Nelson Mandela went to Ethiopia, where he started training with rebel groups there. Then he went to Algeria, where Algeria was also going through its anti-colonial and very violent uh, purging of the French forces uh, that occupied Algeria at the time. He learned from revolutionary figures such as Fidel Castro. He openly said that. And he learned directly from uh, these these anti-colonial actions, violent anti-colonial actions came back home, and it was immediately arrested. At this point, I'm not reading this off of a page, brother, but thank you for thinking that I'm reading this off of a page because you're like, wow, this guy is spitting so fucking hard. He must literally be the most knowledgeable person on the planet. Just kidding. He probably isn't the most knowledgeable person on the planet. He must be reading like a Wikipedia page or something because that's what my favorite YouTubers do. No, I'm spitting off the top dome, okay? I'm spitting off the top dome because I can't fucking remember all of the things uh, and all of the details. So I might be getting some stuff uh, wrong. Like, yeah, no, he wasn't immediately arrested. He operated for some time after coming back, like I, I think a year or two. But basically, in the grand scheme of things, considering how long his prison sentence was, he did not have enough time to uh, operate through violent means. However, he did have enough time to go back to the ANC and tell them that we are no longer engaging in peaceful means of protest, that violence is permissible against the apartheid structure, okay? Once he was arrested, uh, I think the the group, the militant group uh, that, like, spawned off of the ANC or or, uh, collaborated alongside the ANC was, like, the spear, I think. I don't want to. I don't want to get it wrong. Little Bear, what is the name of the spear? It's the MK, I think. Right? Yeah. Um, I don't know the 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 um yeah well okay don't give me the fucking spear of the nation thank you someone said the the actual name umkonta was this way umkonta was this way uh also known as mk but also known as i think is the spirit of the nation is the is the group that i was thinking of anyway so throughout that entire time there were massive uh there were there were a lot of attacks there were a lot of attacks against uh police there were attacks against civilians okay people were and these these were very violent uh, this is part of the reason why, this is part of the reason why, and this is the paramilitary wing of the African National Congress, and was founded by Nelson Mandela in the wake of the Sharpville massacre that I told you where 69 uh, apartheid protesters were murdered ruthlessly by the South African government, okay? Um, there were a lot of, uh, there was a lot of, of, of violence that they engaged in, of course, and this is part of the reason why Nelson Mandela was on the terrorist watch list until 2008 even far a- i mean even after he was uh released from prison and uh on top of that was democratically elected and yet uh until 2008 he still was on the terrorist watch list 
in the United States of America. The manifesto referred to by Mandela, uh, adducted, adduced by the prosecution in his trial as Exhibit AD, included the statements. Our men are armed and trained freedom fighters, not terrorists. We are fighting for democracy, majority rule, the right of the Africans to rule Africa. We are fighting for a South Africa in which there will be peace and harmony and equal rights for all people. We are not racialists, as the white oppressors are. The African National Congress has a message of freedom for all who live in our country. Now I'm reading from the page. This is what he said. Okay? Their aim was to act only against hard targets such as power pylons and avoid injury or loss of life. But of course... No matter what happens in the domestic campaign, there still were bombings or there were still people that were injured, civilians that were injured. Church Street bombing in 1983 was detonated in Pretoria near the Air Force headquarters, resulting in 19 deaths and 217 injuries. The Amazim Tommy, uh, Amazim Todi bombing in 1985, uh, 1985 in the natal South Coast, five civilians were killed and 40 were injured when Umkontowe Sizwe Cadre. Andrew uh, Sibusiso Zondo detonated an explosive in a rubbish bin at a shopping center. Okay. The Durban beachfront bombing in 1986, a bomb detonated in a bar, killed three civilians and injured 69. Robert McBride received the death penalty for this bombing, and uh, this bombing became known as the Magoo's Bar bombing. Now I am reading off of a page. Yes. What the fuck? I'm showing you what I'm reading. It's impossible for me to remember every single minutia, you fucking dinguses. Clearly, I have to, uh, if I want to give you the most accurate information, even though this is also summarized, I, I'm going to read at certain points, okay? Now, what is important here? Well, let me tell you what's important, okay? Civilian deaths, of course, occurred in the bombing campaigns. There were also other brutal practices. I'm not going to get into it too much because why did I start talking about this? I started talking about this because time and time again, they went back to Nelson Mandela. Time and time again, they went back to Nelson Mandela when he was imprisoned and said, Nelson, we will release you from prison as long as you condemn violence, as long as you condemn violence and condemn Marxism, condemn socialism, condemn communism, and condemn violence as an emancipatory means. Nelson Mandela said, first by way of his daughter, I believe, and also, or was it a sister? Or, and, and also personally said, no, I will not condemn the violence. He said, and I will not condemn Marxism, I will not condemn communism, I will not condemn socialism, and I will not condemn violence. The reason why I will not condemn it is because of the situation that is presented to me. How can I be treated as an equal when I am enslaved by you, when I'm in chains, when I am... Subject to the chains. How can you ask a man to make claims when you do not treat him like a man? When you treat him like an animal. And they kept asking him over and over again. And he said, no. And each time, each time he said, no. And he still stayed in prison for five fucking years. So the idea, the idea is that, um, yeah, but they skipped that over in his biopic. Yeah, of course they skipped that over in his biopic because they only cover what Nelson Mandela did after he was elected. Once he, once he got out of prison. Why did, he, why did they cover that? Because that was the peaceful reconciliation process. That's where he went and he fucking hugged and kissed the prosecutor that said he should get the death penalty. He, uh, you know, he, he hugged and kissed all the white guys. They never ended up doing the expropriation that was supposed to happen. And that's partially the reason why South Africa's economy is as fucked as it is uh, pretty much uh, during the apartheid, but at least, like, there is no apartheid, okay? Now, anyway, the point is, <clears throat> the point is, capitalists were like, all right, we'll throw the racism away as long as we can still keep the same class dynamic where 90% of the viable land is still owned by 10% of the population, 10% of the population that happens to be white. Um, there's, there is a, there's a lesson to be learned there. There's a lesson to be learned there. And that lesson is, Piers Morgan is a fucking fraud who doesn't know anything about history, and he's just simply using whitewashed revolutionary figures throughout time because he's a fucking dumbass who thinks that Nelson Mandela was like Gandhi. He was like hugging and kissing all the white boys, all the quirked up white boys, and that's why they were like, you know what? Fuck. Fuck, men. We decided it's actually bad to be racist, men. Fuck. That's what they did. And then they were like, yeah. Nobody said kill the boars. They did white boy summer. They fucking, 
uh, you know, they they hugged and kissed, and and they 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 ended apartheid. That's how it worked. Thank you, thank you, Piers Morgan. Where's the fucking Nelson Mandela? Is a fucking idiotic question when you don't know anything about the history of South African apartheid. Anyway, all right. So, Nelson, on both sides. Nelson Mandela. Yeah, well, where is that Nelson figure? Mandela, N N Nelson Mandela actually have criticized Israel for being a horrible state. All of the South African uh, I, I <laughs> activists know. have actually my point is, Israel. My, uh, uh, my point is yes. about how he... See, you should have just fucking lobbed that bullet back at him. But, but you know, that is a, uh, is a history lesson for a different time, I guess. Um, you know. Jesus Christ, worst accent ever dropped. Okay, stop. I know. My, my South African needs better. It needs work. I know. Sport boycotts, football, and sanctions had a huge impact on the end of the apartheid. It fucked. There's no equivalent in Israel. Yes. Partially because, uh, partially because the BDS campaign that was successful in playing a role in the end of the apartheid alongside the, the violent emancipatory actions okay uh was was shut down it was shut down you can't do it in 36 states if you want to have a job uh it, it is it is there is legislation that says bds protests and having a job are you know not permissible at the same time if you want to engage in the act of of supporting the boycott divest and sa uh, put sanctions on israel movement that means uh you can't have a job like in in texas if you're a public school teacher you have to sign a fucking, uh, literally sign a form that says you will never boycott or, or engage in a, a boycotting the state of Israel and companies that work in the state of Israel. Now, the other reason why, what was in 2009? The other reason why uh, there is no Nelson Mandela in this <laughs> equation is because the Palestinians have also tried peacefully uh, to resist. And have been killed time and time again. As a matter of fact, the Palestinians didn't even try to resist at all and still got killed in the inception of the Israeli state. Um, sure, there were uh, riots. There were riots uh, in the 20s leading to uh, the, the British mandate refusing to allow uh, more Jewish immigration at the time when Jewish immigration was an absolute necessity un for understandable reasons because of uh, the, the uh, anti-Semitism that was popping off, even though, of course... Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> they did not allow Jewish people to to uh, seek refuge in America either. But that's besides the point. Pape wrote about this. The pa the people who taught the very first Zionist immigrants how to tend crops were the Palestinian natives. Yes, as I was saying, uh, what I was trying to explain is that that uh, many of the Palestinians that tried to peacefully resist were killed. Many of the Palestinians that also tried to uh, peacefully negotiate were killed. <laughs> so the notion. That, uh, you know, a, a peaceful consideration has not occurred. A peaceful means of, like, ending the occupation has not occurred is a stupid one. Anyway, let's continue. He, how he responded to a country that was so divided is a, tem I, I is a, template, I I is a template for how you I, get to peace, isn't it? Who's Lucas I, I, Gage? I haven't met Nelson Mandela, so I wouldn't know. Hmm. But, like, I, 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 there is a point, there's a, there's a very important point here. You know, I want to understand... What is the logic of Israel? Yeah, see, he doesn't know because his fucking history has been so goddamn whitewashed. Brother, you're, you're Egyptian. It's the same continent, homie. Goddamn. Anyway, it's okay. There's more, there's more happening. So. Carpet bombing Gaza. I mean, if there's a logic, if it is a good, if this will make Israel safe, I want to hear the logic. So if they continue bombing, what are they hoping to achieve? Well, I think what, we, know what what we know what their stated aim is. Their stated aim is to eradicate yes. and wipe out Hamas. They believe Hamas no, are, yeah, living, but... are living predominantly in northern Gaza. They also are aware they're living amongst civilians. So it's an incredibly difficult okay. thing. As so, I said, as I said so, in my so monologue, so, 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 you know, it is so very, very so difficult to see how I, they I, do I, this I, without I, massive collateral I, damage. I can, so if I can understand this correctly, basically Israel is doing this to pressure the Palestinian community in Gaza to turn against Hamas. Is that right? I'm sure that's part of it, yes. That's part of it. So this is exactly what terrorist organizations do, because terrorist organizations will have no chance beating a whole nation in battle. Lucas Gage is a literal neo-Nazi who is Israel because it's majority Jewish. Yeah, I don't know who the fuck that guy is, but I'm not looking at this shit anyway. There's a bunch of people that in this, um, uh, in this, in the criticisms of Israel, have like found a, a a new found a uh, you know new new fame I guess and uh, a lot of them are charlatans I refuse to click on their links I don't know who the fuck that other guy was um but I don't give a shit about who the other guy is 
there's a bunch of people that in this um uh in this in the criticisms of Israel have like found a a, a new found a uh you know new new fame I guess and uh a lot of them are charlatans I refuse to click on their links I don't know who the fuck that other guy was I don't give a shit about who the other guy is. So they terrorize and they kill the civilians in order to spread fear and terror so they can turn against their government to change their policy or to resign. You have just compared Israel with ISIS. No, I haven't. I don't, I don't see any comparison between it's Israel It's going to be the headlines tomorrow. Piers yeah, Morgan, no, not, Israel is ISIS. Lots only, of ISIS. Only amongst people who weren't listening. The, the comparison, of which course. is more apposite, is ISIS and Hamas. They are both nihilistic yes, terror groups absolutely. intent on killing as many Jewish people and others as they can possibly kill. And you, you, can't, what? I'm you, gonna can't, do you can't get I'm peace gonna do with so people like that. Absolutely. You know what? I'm going to do something that nobody done on your television. Mm. You know what I'm going to do I'm on your episode? I'm going to do I'm going to pretend that I'm an Israeli citizen. I'm going to put my pla my, myself in the, in the place of an Israeli settler in the kaputs. And I want to speak to my prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu, I have voted for you because you have promised us peace and prosperity and security. On the 7th of October, those son of bitches Hamas, they went into the fence that is regularly heavy, heavily guarded. Usually if there's like a, a, a dove that comes close to it, it will be shot. Mm. Those people went in and they went for six hours before IDF forces was deployed, killing our friends our families, kidnapping our grandmothers and babies, and went in. I want to ask you, Mr. Prime Minister, after you have fractured the Israeli community and you have fucked our courts, our Supreme Courts, what are you doing with the money being given to you, to the United States? Also, you are carpet bombing Gaza with absolutely no regard to our hostages, our people. I heard a rumor in the kibbutz that you're doing that as an, you let that happen to, as an excuse to carpet bomb Gaza, so you push them into Sinai. And I didn't believe that. That's like, not my prime minister. He can never do that. And then I watched an interview for Danny Ayelon. He was your chief advisor. Okay, okay, okay. First of all, no fucking, no fucking uh, Likud voter would ever say that. Every Likud voter would literally be like, I voted for you. Why are you not carpet bombing Gaza harder, you fucking piece of shit? Do I have to literally take matters in my own hands? I ran the ad uh, incorrectly. I ran a one-minute ad break, unfortunately, and I ran it at the top of the hour already. Advisor, he was also the Israeli ambassador to the United States. And you know what he said, Mr. Prime Minister? He said that the solution for those Palestinians is to go into a vast land of Sinai and live into tent cities temporarily, huh? Temporarily, wink, wink, until we build Gaza again, and then we invite you back. Aha, yani optahna ba. Yani, family, as we've seen this movie before. So, yani, and, I, and when I saw this, I couldn't explain to my fellows in the kibbutz how come our Israeli government is trading human lives for another piece of land. So as an Israeli citizen, I need to hold my Israeli government accountable. And as an American citizen, I want to know all of these money that we are giving to Israel. We're giving them $4 billion every year. Joe Biden said it's the best investment they ever, America ever done. Well, I, if I am in the, in the place of Joe Biden, I would say, sorry, don't speak. Uh, yeah, but, uh, I, I, would, I would say if I was Joe Biden, I would go down and whisper in the ears of Netanyahu and tell them I hate bad investment. They haunt me, you know, like Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. But the thing is, the thing is, this is the problem. Israel always victimizes itself. And I have never seen a victim putting their oppressor under siege and bombing them 24-7. Israel wants you to believe that they are the victim. Is, dealing with Israel is so different. So it's good. like being in a relationship with a narcissistic psychopath. He fucks you up, and then he makes you think it's your fault. All right, you Basim. look at Israel as Superman, but they're really homelander. Well, they are like they are, you, you, they are shooting Basim, fish I want to say in a barrel, thing. and they are annoyed with the splashes. Basim, I want to say two things. One, if you could just slightly manage your language, we are uncensored. But if you keep swearing, I'm very sorry. We I have am, to I apologize to viewers. Sorry. You I'm may so be sorry. offended by that. I apologize. Um, but I understand I passion. <laughs> Bro, that's so funny. Like every night they're doing um, <laughs> different types of justifications for uh, endless amounts of genocide. And then they fucking turn around. They fucking turn around and literally turn around 
and and uh, say, oh, you can't can't curse, you can't curse, you can't curse. Wait, what do you mean? Let's run high, so let's not get too bogged down about the old swear uh, word. I apologize to the um, viewers. I apologize to the viewers for my language. Uh, my second question the, is this: the, the, after the, the sight of, uh, of dead civilians. After the break, we have the managing director of the Daily Wire, which is Ben Shapiro's company. We were going to interview him on his own, but he's happy to come on and talk with you directly if you are prepared to stay. Well, of course, I, I, I can stay, but again, I am... Fuck this. I am in a disadvantage, and I would like to have my space to respond. OK, we'll come back after the break. I do, Stay I, there, I, 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 because, because Wait, who is he bringing? Uh, Bibi or Ben? Or, or uh, Shapiro? <clears throat> because, because here's the thing. There's two things we, we've got to go to a break. Before, all right? When we come back from the break, we, it'll be you and Jeremy I, and Boring my, my, from my, the Daily Wire. My, 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 I have news. We're taking that. a short break, Basim. I'll be back. Welcome back to Uncensored. For more on the situation in Israel, I'm joined now by the CEO and co-founder of the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's partner, Jeremy Boring. Uh, Jeremy. Oh, dude, what the fuck? That sucks. Not, not Ben. Thank you very much indeed for joining me. I'm sorry we demoted you earlier to mere MD. You are the CEO and co-founder. Uh, you know Ben Shapiro better than anyone, really. Uh, I did a big interview with Ben, obviously, the other night, um, which went around the world um, and has sparked a big reaction, including from uh, our guest, Bassam Youssef, who's still with us. First of all, you've been listening to, to Bassam and what he's been saying. What's your response? Well, first of all, I make it a point not to speak for Ben Shapiro. He's got a 20 IQ points on me and speaks for a living professionally. So he's much better oh, God. to defend himself. But as his business partner, as his best friend, I, I do feel like I have to respond to the things that Bassam was just saying. Uh, first of all, the question of how many sons of bitches. Oh my God. Oh my God. I hate this. It's so nerdy. It's like revenge of the nerds. It's like, ah, uh, uh, I'm going to respond to my uh, best friend. I'm going to respond for my best Like, shut the fuck up, bitch. I don't give a, I, dude, this sucks. I, I wish it was I wish it was uh, Ben Shapiro just have to be killed in order to end this conflict. I, I, mean, I suppose that the answer is as many of them as it takes. That doesn't mean that I or Ben or any decent person in their right mind is happy with the killing of civilians. Yeah, you're you're you are, though. You are fucking happy with it and you don't give a shit. You're so fucking stupid. I hate this. God damn it. I hate it. I hate it. But like, I guess at least they're they're dishonest. OK. I guess I guess they're dishonest. There's a lot of dishonest people. All right, fuck it. Let's uh, just keep going. I posted okay. at the very beginning of this conflict that a, a woman or a child blown apart in Gaza is just as tragic as a Jewish baby killed in one of the settlements. That doesn't mean that Israel's actions and the actions of Hamas are morally equivalent. You know, the tragedy is the tragedy, but the moral equivalency is nonsense. If you if you entered <laughs> Israel with the express purpose of targeting and murdering civilians with your own hands in cold blood, that is not comparable to Israel bombing targets in the Gaza Strip and killing civilians as a terrible, tragic consequence. War, war is terrible. War is an awful thing. That's why decent people don't lightly engage in war and why Hamas should not have incited this war. You know, we can talk about the history of the Israeli conflict. I'm not a professional political commentator. I'm a, I'm a CEO. I'm a screenwriter. Uh, I can't stand him. I, I, I can't. I can't stand him. I don't know why. It's just very frustrating. And I'm certainly not Ben Shapiro. I'm not here to discuss the history of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but we all saw what happened on October 7th. And the idea that Israel was not going to react severely to that, or that Israel should not react severely to that, is ludicrous. And the Jeremy, idea let me ask you. The idea that Ben Shapiro question. should be a moderating voice, mm. that Ben Shapiro should be, what, saying, no, Israel should not respond mm. in this situation. For the record, uh, going back to the uh, the the geo location guy or whatever, what is it? The geo confirm guy. Everyone is uh, everyone is rushing to be like, no, no, no. This is actually a rocket. Uh, this is an intercepted rocket, and that's where the explosion happened. Without accounting for multiple explosions possibly happening in different time frames, okay, and also how large the original explosion was from the only confirmed video. I just want to point that out because I see a lot of people trying to, I, I, I see a lot of people trying to uh, send me this uh, information. Uh, the current Israeli position is that the single rocket misfire killed more people by a factor about 20 than every single rocket launched into Israel since 2001 combined. Yeah. Should the West Bank respond to the violence committed by Israeli settlers? Why does no one ever flip it around like this? I, I, I mentioned that. 
Uh, Reuters, by the way, is reporting that the IDF will release footage of intercepted conversations proving that the Islamic Jihad was behind the bombing of Al-Ahli Baptist Hospital. Yeah, two, two hours ago, the Israeli government sources were calling the Baptist Hospital a terrorist base, and the IDF was boasting about having euthanized Gazans. Now they see how disgusted the world is. IDF is trying to tell us that the backfired rocket from Islamic Jihad is responsible. Yeah, I, I mean, I know. I, I, I covered it at the time, okay? that outrage on October the 7th, which is the worst attack on Jewish people since the Holocaust. Uh, what is proportionate, if it's true, as reports well, are suggesting tonight, that there may have been a hospital hit by a, an Israeli strike and up to 500 people or more have died, that would yeah. seem to me, if that is verified, and it's not verified yet, it, you know, we don't know exactly what has happened other than there's been a hit on this hospital. But if that is verified to have been an Israeli strike, that will strike many people as disproportionate. Certainly. Well, first of all, I don't know what a proportionate response is or why we would want it. I suppose a proportionate response would be for 3,000 Israelis to go through the fence, gun down innocent Palestinian women and children, burn their bodies, burn them alive, take hostages, rape their women. No one wants a proportionate response. No, no moral person could possibly call for a proportionate response. The purpose of war is to defeat your enemy. The West has, in my lifetime, forgotten the purpose of war because the true cost of war is so... Like, I hate... I hate this, like, slimy little fucking creature nerd being like, ah, the West has forgotten what the war is like. Bro, dr I want to drop ship his ass into fucking Gaza so bad. Like, just go. Just go fight then. Ain't nobody stopping you, dude. Get in there. Get, get active. I hate this. I hate this. I hate it so much. He's like, we have to. We have to destroy our enemies. Like, shut the fuck up. Shut up. Go to Ukraine. Well, he's not. He's not a Ukraine guy. Um, he's he, he probably fucking loves Russia. Actually, go to Russia. Yeah, go fight on the Russian side. Go to Ukraine. Fight on the Russian side, brother. See how fast you get fucking lasered. You know what I'm saying? Keyboard commander, ass motherfucker. Terrible. The last time the West engaged in war and won it was World War II, and they did it through incredible brutality. They did it by bringing their enemies to heel. That is not a thing to. That's not a thing to rah-rah about. That's not a thing to look forward to. As I said, all decent people should avoid war. But I think the sort of lie of the post-World War II, the post-war consensus lie, is that somehow war uh, in which you kill a bunch of people and don't secure victory is morally superior to war where you do secure victory. I would say that the only way to morally justify a war is to win it. Otherwise, your the very argument that brought you into the war, this enemy must be defeated, ends up being proven a lie. I mean, Afghanistan, I think ever, America had every right to go into Afghanistan. Uh, the Taliban was harboring Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda... Here, in order, to, in order to describe to you uh, the wrong thing that Israel is doing, I'm going to tell you all the wrong things that America did. <laughs> it's so funny to be like... Yeah, remember when we did that other awful thing that was fucking awful and horrifying? Uh, and, and just really bad overall that most people kind of look back at and go, hey, yeah, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Yeah, that thing was sick, actually. And I'm glad that Israel is doing it. This is funny. It is. I, I can't do anything but laugh at, like, this little fucking nerdy-ass fascist being like, uh, it was so sick when we went into Afghanistan and we did Might is Right and we did war crimes there. And it's like, nah, man, it wasn't good. Flew planes into buildings in the United States, killed thousands of our citizens, uh, brought the nation into untold agony, pain, and horror. America had every right morally to go in and destroy the Taliban and destroy Al Qaeda. Yeah, but I would argue, but the Jeremy. Taliban now, but the Taliban now rules well, in that's Afghanistan. That's my point. Way yeah, wait, what? Exactly. Taliban now rules Al Qaeda. Uh, the Taliban now rules uh, Afghanistan again. So what happened? War was not won. But that's my point, actually. Oh, he's he's saying like we didn't fucking ethnically cleanse every Afghan uh, a child. That's what he's saying. Oh. Okay, no, no, no. He literally, he didn't understand the point that he was, he was trying to make. The point is, exactly, the Taliban controls Afghanistan now and grew in popularity and also in size after the fucking invasion, even though they were getting killed. Why? Because every time you killed one fucking Taliban uh, uh, fighter, you killed like eight 14-year-old citizens that had nothing to do with the fucking Taliban. So then... Guess what happened to the remaining 14-year-olds? They were like, oh, fuck these guys. I'm joining the fucking Taliban. I'm going to fucking snipe their dicks off. Yeah, no shit. Of course that's what's going to happen. 
That's what happens. You get a radicalizing event. You go, all right, fuck it, YOLO. I don't know who the fuck these guys are. They don't speak my language. They're in, like, all this gear and shit. At least these other guys, like, the the, the, the non-pedophile ones I'm, I'm on board with. You know what I mean? The pedophile ones are working with the American uh, uh, military brigades. The, the, trying to get me to be a chaiwala at the fucking base so they can, you know, do statutory rape. All things that were documented by the American military, by the way. I think this bombing is what they were talking about yesterday for eight hours. No, this is the the this is new. This just happened. And that's why they're bringing up the the hospital bombing at the end of this. Yeah, I've done a column about this tonight uh, for the Sun here in the UK. Wait, what? What are you talking about? Holy moly! Um, what am I talking about? What am I talking about? Um, in Afghanistan, the Afghan forces that the American security forces were supposed to be fucking uh, training had a big pedophilia problem, okay? That's right. It did. And then some of those some of those forces that we trained would then turn around and and buddy fuck the American soldiers that were training them. They would turn around, take the American weapons and fucking kill the American soldiers. It happened so goddamn frequently. It's almost like the it was a hospital full of terrorists. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, that's I hope you're being sarcastic, right? Yeah. <laughs> Doctors, nurses, children, babies in incubators doing terrorism uh, by, by being alive. Terrorist babies, dude. I think this person has to be joking. No one is like this fucking stupid. There's no shot. McCarthy gone communism one. Does this mean Hunter is guilty? I feel like a lot of people who uh, fancy themselves to be like, you know, woke or whatever, just like turn on the fucking fascism dial so fast. There's no shot this guy fucking legitimately believes that. Please think about it a little bit. Comment on the Israeli dude wearing a key. I don't think he's Israeli. Um, I don't know why he's wearing the key. Maybe to like taunt Palestinians or something. Maybe, but I, I think it's just, is he even Jewish? I don't know. I don't know why he's wearing a key. Maybe he likes doing coke. Which is, mm -hmm. I, I was editor of a newspaper when the Iraq war happened. I uh, opposed it very aggressively as the editor of the recall. paper. Um, and sadly, we were borne out by events. It was a complete disaster. The only thing that makes me happy, I'm sorry, what does the key signify? The key is actually very important for Palestinians. Uh, it, it is a signifier of their right to return. Um, that uh, 700,000 Palestinians that were expelled uh, in the Nakba, uh, which translates to catastrophe, thought that they would be able to return to their houses after the war was over. That, uh, you know, they were being purged from their homes, but they would always, of course, a couple weeks, maybe a month later, be able to return. That's why they brought their, uh, that's why they brought their keys with them. They still hold their keys. They still have their keys uh, with them to their old houses, many of which was, of course, reduced to rubble. And then uh, purposely trees, European looking pine trees were planted in areas where Arab villages existed to Europeanize the, the areas and to remove it from its uh, uh, Arabic influence. Another thing uh, that they did during the Nakba or in the aftermath of the Nakba in the inception of the Israeli state was to take over, uh, take over areas that were, of course, uh, uh, owned by Arabs, the villages that Arabs lived in, expel them by... Uh, threatening to rape them, and in some instances actually raping them, throwing them in ovens, things of that nature, um, and, and just overall terrifying them with a superior military force. Uh, they would also uh, just take over villages and then change the names of those villages to resemble uh, uh, something from, like, the Bible, you know, so that they could just... Uh, so that they could, uh, so that they could, uh, you know, have a Hebrew name for an Arab village, and and try to justify that there's a biblical reason for it. What was the pedo thing you were talking about? Chaiwalas in Afghanistan uh, were were uh, raved by uh, the the forces that we were training. There was a big pedophilia problem with the with the Afghan forces that we were we were training. Called Bachabazi. Torah, not the Bible. Yeah, Torah references, biblical references, that sort of thing. All right, let's continue. The Iraq war, in my view, it was illegally contested, I think. Um, and the consequences were appalling in terms of loss of life, a million people, in terms of ISIS being allowed to breed. Oh, it's because Daily Wire is owned by Benki Ventures. The name, which was inspired by a bent key necklace, boring wear is also the name. Okay, there you go. That's why he's wearing a bent key necklace. Create Thank you, Chatter. Merry hell around the world in terms of complete dismantlement of, of Iraq itself as a, as a functioning country. Uh, and I think...
I didn't say the Taliban had chaiwalas. I said the Afghan security forces that we were supposedly training on the ground did that. Chai boys. Afghanistan, again, 20 years of, you know, attacking an enemy, which is now running the country again, seemed to me, again, to be kind of pointless. And I do wonder whether Israel, in its blind fury, which I completely understand, has thought through the consequences of actually launching a full air ground and sea offensive into Gaza as to actually what happened. Wait, your aunt made that movie? I watched it last night. Arctic Leet, tell your aunt. Uh, she's wonderful. I, I actually watched, uh, and I was recommending this earlier today. Uh, I watched 1948 uh, Creation and Catastrophe. Ahla Muhtaseb. Yeah, it is a very good documentary that doesn't even, uh, doesn't even just like, it's not like a one-sided affair either. It goes directly to uh, Irgun forces that uh, are veterans, like, you know, veterans of the the uh, uh, original Zionist uh, military, militant brigades uh, that, and they talk to the veterans that are alive to this day. They even talk to a fucking British police officer, as a matter of fact, uh, which is which I thought was very interesting. And uh, they talk to the Palestinians. They talk to the to the Jews that were there. Uh, and and the the atrocities that were committed, some of which has been declassified, but many of which is still not declassified by the Israeli government. And it's very good. It's a very good documentary. I uh, highly recommend you all watch it. Like I said, 1948, Creation and Catastrophe. I think um, the reason why I like it especially is because, like, it... Uh, thank you, Hassan, for all the cover you've been doing these past week. You don't realize how important it is for us Palestinians, especially in the West Bank. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it, it's a great documentary. It's very sad, but it's a great documentary nonetheless. Twist Star Hassan Piker raised a huge amount of money for Twist Star. Hassan Piker often gets hate from his detractors who claim there's an inherent hypocrisy between his own accumulation of wealth and his constant advocacy for workers, despite the fact that he routinely walks the walk in addition to talking the talk. Now Twist Star and his community have raised over 840,000 aid. As ABC News reports, Israeli officials state more than 1,400 people have been killed in Israel. Meanwhile, according to the BBC, health officials report that Israel's retaliation, which has included air raids, have reduced much of Gaza rubble, has killed over 3,000 Palestinian people. On October 14th, he set up a fundraising campaign to support the Palestine Children's Relief Fund, American Near East uh, Refugee Aid, Medical Aid for Palestinians, and the Palestinian Red Crescent Society. By October 16th, the Hassan's community raised more than 700,000. Wow, that's nice. Oh, Kotaku wrote about it. So I guess that's why uh, it's like being channeled through all of the usual outlets. I feel like we're in a catastrophic tailspin. We cannot wrestle our way out of planning in flux. But Biden aids weighing $100 billion request to Congress primarily to aid Israel and Ukraine as well as border security and likely aid to Taiwan. Very big number, substantially from what we'd heard initially. I do not ever want to hear how can we pay for it ever again for the rest of our fucking lives. Do you understand? This can never happen ever again. I'm unbanning this guy because I, I hope that he was just joking. Oh, this, oh, the Doctors Without Borders? Reminder that the, after the U.S. bombed the Doctors Without Borders Hospital in Afghanistan, they first blamed it on Afghans, then they said Taliban had taken it over, then they said it was an accident, then quietly admitted they did it intentionally months later. Ah, oh, Spencer Ackerman is the GOAT. I wish there were more fucking good journalists like him still in mainstream media. Some of them still exist, but they are, unfortunately... Far fewer than the number of fucking charlatan hacks who uh, who basically just uh, uh, operate as stenographers and not necessarily arbiters of the truth. They, uh, you know. I love when people turn around and still go. I love when people turn around and still go. After looking at this exact story, which is identical to the to the same story that has been told by Israel time and time again, and the victims are Muslims again. And you go, so why is it that America supports, uh, why is it that America supports Israel unconditionally? Brother, the enemies are the same. The targets are the same. The attitude is the same. Why wouldn't America support Israel in its, uh, in its uh, conquest of engaging in, uh, in, in ethnic displacement and ethnic cleansing in uh the territories that it currently occupies. Come on. The USA would do the same if not worse. The USA has done the same and worse. Yeah, statement from Joe Brandon is this. Statement from the president. I'm outraged, deeply sad about the explosion at the Al-Ahli Arab Hospital in Gaza. An explosion. 
and the terrible loss of life that resulted. Immediately upon hearing this news, I spoke with King Abdullah II of Jordan, the Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel, and have directed my national security team to continue gathering information about what exactly happened. The United States stands unequivocally for the protection of civilian life during conflict, and we mourn the patients, medical staff, and other innocents killed or wounded in this tragedy. How is there not a second fucking uh, uh, perspective on this? The, it is crazy that the only video we have is that one from that one fucking uh, roof. I'm losing my mind. There has to be more videos. Just saw a video. People claim the video proved that the rocket hit the hospital was Hamas. Is that true or just propaganda? I do not believe that it was a fucking rocket that hit the hospital that was a Hamas rocket. That is a much larger rocket than anything that the uh, Hamas or uh, the, the Islamic Jihad brigades have. There is no power in Gaza. Okay. There is no power in Gaza which is deliberate, which is by design, so that uh, you know uh, the Israeli forces can control the narrative pretty aggressively. And even then, doctored video and audio is going to come out. The prime minister is going to come on and make a video claiming it's undeniable proof that the IDF would never strike civilians because it's not the rules of war. The IDF controls all forms of media coming in and out. There's no electricity and inside, internet inside of Gaza, except for the fact that you know one video did get out, and that video very clearly shows that it is a giant missile. It is not a rocket, but it is a giant missile. But you you can tell by the number of dead. Yeah, it, it was a rocket. It was a piece of the Hamas rocket. You see it blow up in the sky and pieces scatter. Brother, please, I urge you to exercise a little bit of critical thinking. A rocket that was intercepted is not capable of doing that damage that you saw. Fucking, oh my God. Why? Why are you so quick? No, that video is not debunked. The video that they're showing, there were some videos that were debunked that Israel themselves posted and then deleted. But the potential that it also hit ammo, that is not what it looks like when it hits ammunition. Okay? Ammo hidden at the hospital? That is insane. That's not how that works. A piece of artillery, uh, like, a, like a fucking... A shell off of a fucking bomb that was intercepted falls directly into ammunition that is just hanging out at the side of the fucking garage, at the side of the hospital that blows up with one explosion and not multiple. That's crazy. Exercise a little bit of fucking critical thinking. God damn it. I mean, there are plenty of fucking people. I don't care about this. Uh, I, I, look, there are plenty of smart who looked at the, the death and the destruction that that Hamas rocket uh, could have potentially caused and realized it can't be a fucking Hamas rocket that was misfired because there has never been a Hamas rocket that has been able to kill 500 people. The payload of the missile that struck the hospital and the sound that it emitted as it was flying are very similar to JDAMs that have been used in uh in in afghanistan the the payload is far greater signs it is an airstrike size of the explosion av evidence corresponding with jdam strike signature israel saying the hospitals were fair game previous israeli attacks on this building almost all governments blaming israel signs it was a hamas rocket israel says so well now and also uh, fucking uh, uh osint andes as well it is fucking ridiculous okay Israel already bombed that exact hospital. Israel sent a fucking missile to that hospital on Saturday. What the fuck are we talking about? That's 100% a JDAM or a MK84 with a JDAM kit. Just look at the video on the ones used in Afghanistan by U.S. Air Forces. There's videos on YouTube. I did. I, I literally showed uh, what a JDAM in Afghanistan sounded like and looked like and what the damage looked like versus the rocket that they fucking lobbed into the missile that they lobbed into the fucking hospital the idea that the idea that like i do not know how they're gonna spin it i don't know i mean israel has lied time and time again they they have lied time and time again they've also very openly said that they are interested in hitting the hospitals i don't know why people just forget that part happens at the end of that well, I suppose Israel wasn't really given the opportunity to fully contemplate what the consequences of that action might be because Israel didn't instigate this war. This war was instigated by a cap. That's insane, dude. That's insane. Again, this is so fucking stupid. You're a stupid person for saying that. Horrible terrorist attack on Israel and a state is put in a position where it has to respond. Now, 
One might argue that the very fact that Israel has yet to actually launch their ground invasion means that they are actually making a calculation about what the cost will be, what victory. Yeah, no, they are. They don't give a shit. They're working on the spin already. Wait, let's see. What is, what is the spin now? Whoa, Israeli media is reporting that the IDF has a recording of a conversation between Islamic Jihad terrorists confirming that they launched a rocket that hit the Gaza hospital. It would reportedly be released shortly. For those of you, for those of you who are new in this fucking field, okay, a lot of you are going to come back in here and go over and over again. Dude, I told you, Israel said it. And also here, they found this fucking proof. It's conclusive. Wait until there is expert analysis and third-party analysis if you do not believe me, okay? This has happened a million times over. This is Christ. I can't stand this fucking guy. They're looking for voice actors still. What? I just want you to understand. They have done this so many times over they literally they literally have done this, this so many times over they've done it before they've done it with executions they've done it with assassinations by sniper fire they've done it with bombings before they they did it with another bombing campaign um uh, with with uh, uh they where they bombed uh, five children in a fucking uh, uh in a graveyard and then claimed it was the islamic jihad rocket it's always, they do it all the fucking time. The delay is entirely because Israel miscalculated West acceptance of ethnic cleansing in Gaza. No, I don't, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what they, they thought people were going to say. I don't think that they were that stupid. Uh, would you promote Jewish Voice for Peace? Yes, uh, I have. Uh, I have promoted Jewish Voice for Peace. They did this with, a sh they did this with uh, Shireen Abu Akleh's uh, murder as well. They assassinated, they assassinated Shireen Abu Akleh and then they literally said, it was the Palestinian forces that did it. And then you know what they did? I was there. I covered it. Okay. I covered it at the time. This was a very important fucking story. Some of you were there watching me cover the story at the time as well. So you remember. Shirin Abu Akhlek was assassinated near the Jinin camp. Okay. This is a refugee camp that has its own standing uh, milit militia. And Israel is regularly engaging uh, in this camp and trying to fucking kill the, the militia, the Jinin brigade. Okay which legally have a right to exist. They are operating under the uh, legal boundaries of international law. This is not the Israeli land. They're just their own uh, militia. Anyway, um, but in one of the many incursions into the Janine refugee camp where Palestinians live, uh, Shirin Abu Akhlek, a Christian Palestinian American reporter that was very famous in the entire uh, Muslim world, okay, in the entire uh, Arab world specifically, was assassinated by an IDF sniper rifle. Okay? Straight up. They were coming onto the scene. She clearly had a visible press vest on. She had a clear visible press helmet on. She was shot in the neck. She was not shot in the head. She was shot in the neck so that you could, you know, so that the sniper could fucking kill her. So, um, in, the immediate, uh, in the immediate aftermath of the situation... Okay, Israel said that it was the Palestinian Janine Brigade that did this. Not only did they just claim that it was the Palestinians that did this, that it was uh, one of the Palestinian forces in the area, then they said it was possibly crossfire. Okay, so what did they do? They didn't just say it was the Palestinian forces that did it. They also tried to show proof. They do this all the fucking time. In an effort to show proof that it was the Palestinian forces that actually assassinated Shireen Abu Akhlek, okay, they showed, I think forensics confirmed she was shot on the back of the head. Oh, I thought she was shot on the neck. Okay. Um, well, regardless, 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 in order to show proof, they showed a battalion that was actually shooting at the time. They just showed, like, a bunch of scary guys. They showed the Janine Brigade, right, shooting. Scary. Uh, look, look, there's a, there's a video. Okay, look at, look at this. This is a real video. This is, like, these are the guys. They're shooting, and they're scary. They must have shot her. And then forensic evidence found very quickly that the people that they were posting about, the people that were actually there that were shooting, were literally miles like, uh, like uh, on the other side of the fucking city, miles away. Can't see. I'm just talking. I'm not showing you anything, right? They will pull out 
probably all of the fucking stops. Uh, they will pull out all the fucking stops until they arrive at this. Dear journalist, friendly reminder, take official Israeli statements with a healthy dose of skepticism when reporting on what happens inside Gaza, okay? Prime Minister Bennett, on the sad death of the veteran journalist Shirin Abu Akleh, according to the information we've gathered, it appears likely that armed Palestinians who were firing indiscriminately at the time were responsible for the unfortunate death of the journalist. That's what they said. Then they quietly admitted that it was actually a Israeli sniper rifle that shot her and won't charge the soldiers who shot her. The audio with the Israelis released. This is a joke. You deserve a laugh. No. I know that's not intentional, but using terms rockets and missiles interchangeably, I'm sure you know, but Hamas doesn't have guided missiles. Rockets like fire are like fireworks in comparison. Yes. BBC reporter on the size of the explosion. I already covered this. Yes. Uh, I already showed this. Here's the video that... Here's the video Israel released. No, this is secret files. What? Israel says a uh, failed Hamas rocket caused devastating hospital blast. This is not the video that they released. Islamic Jihad is responsible for the failed rocket launch, what? which hit the hospital in Gaza. Is what the fuck is this? This has 138 views, dog. Don't know why so many OSINT guys who literally pride themselves on understanding the difference between missiles and rockets currently are showing their asses when they act like this was an intercepted, intercepted rocket that fell onto the hospital and caused an explosion that has never... That has never been caused before. This is the single most violent strike that has ever occurred. Partially because Israel does blow up hospitals, but they do not actually, they do not actually lob missiles at hospitals uh, uh, directly, especially when there are people inside of it. They don't launch a, they don't throw JDAMs at fucking hospitals when there are people inside the hospitals. It is wild that in order for this to work, in order for this to, to, to work in, in the minds of so many people, that uh, the, the uh, Hamas rockets were able to cause mass atrocities that they've never been able to uh, physically. If it turns out that there was not an aircraft in the immediate area, keep in mind that JDAM ERs exist, extended range, depending on the variant, can reach up to 50 miles. Like, the explosion, the explosion was ginormous. The explosion that happened was massive. It was a, a much larger payload than anything Hamas or, or Islamic Jihad has. Anyway, the story keeps changing and there's no suspicion or skepticism from the other side. Yeah, and that's what's frustrating. What is this? ITV Both News. Found the exact, I found the exact missile that whistled in the hospital that is not an inter Israel intercepted have rocket. Been urging caution in how it responds. ITV News is like not great. Wait, oh shit, there's another video. What the fuck? The Al Ali Hospital tonight. Like, does that look like an intercepted fucking uh, shrapnel falling on? You think that's an intercepted shrapnel falling on uh, the hospital chat? Do you think that that is a misfire from a, from a fucking rocket? Like a, like a, a Hamas rocket? Because I've shown you... The, the misfires from Hamas rockets. It does not look like that. The whistle of what officials in Gaza ya say Allah. was an Israeli ya airstrike. Allah, ya Allah. Ya Allah. Sirens in the background. The buildings ablaze. This is Hold not on. the periphery of the hospital site, but the courtyard right at its heart. This video, verified by ITV News, was taken by someone trying to escape through this. The hospital is in the north of the Gaza Strip, right in the center of Gaza City, a built-up area. Witnesses described to ITV News how ceilings caved in here, inside hospital wards. A British doctor working inside the hospital spoke to ITV News a few hours before the attack. What's happening here is, is a crime against humanity uh, and their decision has to be uh, which side do they want to be on. Uh, uh, I am and remain committed to be an advocate for my patients and their relatives and to defend their basic right to life. It I was left to stuff. a hospital Sorry. nearby to take in the injured. 
and the dead. A healthcare system already crumbling, literally. Many of those injured had traveled to the Al Ali hospital, not for treatment, but for shelter. Surely a hospital was the safest place to be. It was not. At first, the Israel Defense Forces said it was looking into the cause of the attack, promising an investigation and an update. Tonight, the Israeli Prime Minister posted on social media to say the Israeli military was not responsible. He blamed Islamic Jihad group, writing, the barbarian terrorists in Gaza are the ones who attacked the hospital. But no one has said it was behind the attack, a massacre which has the potential for momentous consequences. These are crucial hours, not just for this conflict, but for the entire region. And Rohit joins me from Jerusalem. Rohit, look, it's not just the Israelis. For many Western intelligence agencies, they'll have every eye in the sky they have, I assume, available to them, scouring every inch of Gaza permanently, not least because they're looking for their hostages. So there must be a clear answer as to who fired this rocket. Do we have it tonight? We don't have it yet, Tom, and we can't say with any certainty who was responsible. Um, yeah, it... Again, going back to the Noah tweet, but like it's important to understand, okay? It's important to understand. It's literally uh, signs as an airstrike, size of the explosion, audio, video evidence corresponding with JDAM strike signature, Israel saying the hospitals were fair game, previous Israeli attacks on this hospital, this exact hospital from Saturday, okay? Everybody is like, oh, this is definitely Israel. Israel itself or Israeli officials themselves kind of busted a nut early on and fucking uh, said that Hamas was there and basically, uh, you know, took ownership over the attack. Now, signs it was a Hamas rocket, Israel says so. It's crazy. People on the ground said it was a fucking uh, a massive attack, uh, a massive air attack from Israel. It's just like, I don't know. Let's finish this. Looks like. Any rational person, any decent person can engage in a conversation about what is the appropriate response for Israel. Of course they can. Uh, but this sort of moral equivalency thing, I don't think is a sign of decency to engage in a conversation okay. about moral equivalency. Let me bring uh, Basim back in. You've been listening to this, Basim. What's your response to what Jeremy's been saying? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the gentleman's name. It's Jeremy Boring. He's the chief executive of The Daily Wire and co-founder with Ben Shapiro of The Daily Wire. Hi, Jeremy. Please say hello to Ben Shapiro and please tell him that I do think he is the smartest person to ever walk the earth. Thank you so much. So as response to Jeremy, uh, I, 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 I agree with everything you said. I mean, what is disproportionate? I mean, that you, he just used the uh, examples from Second World War and America showing that civilian casualty is, uh, uh, I mean, I, I heard his voice. He was very sad. And he, as he was telling us, it is so inevitable to kill so many civilians because it's something that we cannot avoid. I hear the sadness in his voice. And I know <laughs> that it's a very difficult decision to kill all of these civilians because that's for a higher cause. And I understand. But my question, I, I have two questions. The question is, how can you justify the killing in the West Bank where Hamas does not exist? And if the disproportionate response uh, during the, uh, over all of these years have actually worked, what will be new this time that did not happen before? I okay. just want to... No defender, no, no Zionism defender has an answer for this, by the way. That is kind of at the heart of the problem. That's it. Uh, this is why I keep bringing it up as well. And, and I have yet to hear a good answer. No one has an answer for it. Everybody always, everybody always shows a claim that like Israel was cooperating and and uh, you know offering assurances on on the the security cooperations, and it's like no, they weren't. They fucking were not. They they never were. Look at the West Bank. They never were. That was not Hamas. That was literally the enemy of Hamas. The the dudes who control Palestinian Authority, the dudes who control the West Bank are they are dudes who have literally fought against Hamas. Okay.
There is no answer for it. We, uh, that, 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 that was my question. Okay. That Basim, was my question. Uh, I'm going to Okay. I'm so, 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 so now, so so now, Basim, so now if to... I ask the question, can I, can I say something on my side? Well, a little you've, bit no, Basim, with respect, a little you've bit had personal. Ha- Basim, with respect, I gave you uh, half the show to have your side. Jeremy's had a lot less time. Uh, I'm going to have to move on. You want me to leave? Basim, I'm going to stay? I'm going to have to let you go because we've been on there with you for 40 minutes. Oh, okay. Now. Bye All bye. Right? But listen, bye bye. bye I'd bye. like to talk to you again bye and bye. thank you for joining the program. I appreciate it. Oh, by, 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 by the way, my, my, my wife's family is, is all right and they sent us a house. It's, it's bombed. It's beautiful. It's, it's going to be a good uh, uh, like Halloween theme. So well, thank I'm you. very sorry for what your family are going through in Gaza and I mean oh, that no. very sincerely. By the way, I don't know, I, I don't know my fa- I don't know him, by the way. I, don't, I haven't actually met them. They didn't even come to my wedding. They couldn't because they are stuck in Gaza. Okay. And she never saw them because, you know, Gaza is not a destination. Basim, I, as I know, say, we, I, we, 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 we hear their voices. Yeah, and it's, uh, they, they die. It's fine. It's I'm, fine. Basim, I wish your family all the very best. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate right. it. I, I don't. Thank you. This guy's off his rocket? No, he's, he's a comedian. And I, I think he's utilizing satire to, to try to describe the situation.